first four verses, and then we're going to go down to verse number 38. If you would just follow along there with us tonight. Once again, I want you to know that I appreciate you being here. And when I'm done preaching, let's get in the altar, all right? Let's pray our way through to revival, that the Lord would just have His way. Any time that the Holy Ghost moves on you, you obey Him, all right? You just do that, and we'll see God move in this place. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 1, if you have it, say Amen. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Do you notice a recurring word here? Verse number 1, it said, They were all with one accord in one place. Verse 2, And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse number 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Verse number 39 says it again, And to all that are afar off. I want to preach to you tonight on... He will fall upon us all. He will fall upon us all. Can you just stretch your hand this way before you're seated and just ask the Lord to help and have His way? Heavenly Father, we ask for Your help tonight. We ask for the anointing of the Holy Ghost on the preaching and the hearing of the Word. God, most of all, I ask You to move in this altar service tonight. Lord, would You just open up the windows of heaven and fall upon us. God, we'll give You the glory and the praise and the honor. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We've read here the account of the day of Pentecost. We know that at the day of Pentecost, the church was born with fire and with power. And there were 120 of them that were filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. This is Pentecost. It is one of the feasts that Israel celebrated. They celebrated several throughout the year, but the first one was the Feast of Passover. That was remembering redemption and them being brought out of their bondage. They celebrated the second one, which was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And unleavened was a sign or type of sin, and they wanted to unleaven, so unsin. They wanted to sanctify themselves. Then they had the third feast, and that was the first fruits, and they would wave them to the Lord, and that was a sign that Jesus would resurrect, and then all of us would follow after that. Praise God. Then they had another feast, the fourth one, and that was Pentecost. Hallelujah. The Feast of Pentecost. Glory to God. Amen. That is what we're reading about here. The Feast of Pentecost was fully come. But now they have a Pentecost experience that's not a feast, but it's a power from God that falls. Glory to God. And we today are experiencing Pentecost. Aren't you glad that you're Pentecostal? Amen. I can remember remember and uh, just imagine times that the Holy Ghost is moved. And when I read this account here in the day of Pentecost, I imagine some things that were going on. I would love to have been here, Brother Johnston, on this first day of Pentecost. I would have loved to have been in the service and see what was going on. I can imagine in my mind, maybe Peter, that great big old burly fisherman, and he was probably yelling out, Hallelujah, I got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 
I got the Holy Ghost. I can imagine Matthew. He was the tax collector. He was probably laid out in the Spirit somewhere singing a song of praise unto the Lord. I can imagine Mary Magdalene who had been delivered of seven devils and she was probably singing, He set me free. He set me free. Hallelujah. John was probably jumping up and down. James was laying on his back praising the Lord. You see, they were experiencing Pentecost and oh, what a service it was. Do you know what, friend? You and I can have the same Pentecost happen right here in this revival. Glory to God. Oh, Lord, send another Pentecost. Oh, Lord, send another wave and moving of the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, send another touch of Your Spirit upon us and give us an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want to preach to you tonight about these four alls. Here in verse number 1, it said they were all with one accord in one place. That is the all of unity, or what I like to call it, the all of harmony. It says they were with one accord. Now, I don't know much about music. I believe our, our sister said that tonight, that she doesn't know much about music. Well, I don't either. But I do know this, that accord is supposed to sound nice. And so it said they were in one accord. They were all in the same accord, if you put it that way. They were all on the same note. They were all in the same tune. And they had harmony. Glory to God. Well, friend, that's what we need today in the church, is we need harmony and unity in the house of God. Amen. I know that today, all around the church world, amen, there are so many splinters that you've got to be careful where you sit because you might get stuck by a splinter in the pew. But I want to tell you something, friend. If we're going to have Pentecost, we need to get in harmony and we need to get in unity. We've got to put the schisms and the divisions and the discord behind us and realize we're all in this for the same thing. We're all serving the same God. We're all going the same direction. Amen. Discord will not allow the Spirit of God to move, but when we all get our mind on God and we begin to focus on Him, that's when we can have an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh yes, friend, we must get our attention off of our differences and get it on what we've got in common. We've got a common Christ that died for us. We've got a common cross. We've got a common creed. We've got a common cause. And we're going to a common city. And so let's all all pull together and let's all work together and let's all push toward revival and see if we can have a move of God. Amen. Amen. Do you remember? Hey man, you won't be offended if I take my tie off, will you? Glory to God. Hey man. Do you remember the story of the man with a palsy in the Bible? He was sick. He was dying. And the Bible said he was born of four. Carried a four. Pastor, would you help me tonight? Hey man, come here please. Brothers, would you help me tonight? Brother, you want to help me tonight over there? Born of four. Hey man, these four fellows came to pick up this lame man. This lame man. Hey man. All right, fellas, every one of you grab a corner and let's pick this lame man up. He's laying here on a bed. Pick him up. No, no, no. You're picking up a corner. All right, pick him up. Hey man. Now here they go. Let me walk through him for a second. Hey man, here they are. All four of them carrying this man to get help from Jesus. Now I want to ask you a question. Did all of them have to go the same way in order to get him there? Of course they did. They all had to move over and carry him to the place where Jesus was. But listen, what would have happened if these two wanted to go that way and these two wanted to go this way? Amen. They would have torn that person in pieces. They would have ripped him limb for limb. What if all three of them wanted to go the opposite way of the pastor? They would have tore him in pieces. Friend, I want to tell you something. We're a church here tonight. We're all in this thing together together and we're all trying to get to revival and so what we've got to do is all pick up our corner and go the same direction we've got to pick up our end we've got to pray our prayer we've got to fast
past. We've got to go to church. We've got to get in the altar. We've got to enter in. And when we do, friend, we can all go to Jesus and get our help from the Lord in harmony. We've all got to be in harmony. Hallelujah. Thank you, brothers. All in harmony. Amen. Have you ever seen anybody that thought they were a big guy and you were a little you? It's not like that with God, friend. Well, glory. I don't want to meddle. I want to preach. Let's look at the next stall, verse number 2. It says, And it filled it, the Holy Ghost, the wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost flooded in and filled every corner of the building. There was not one square inch of this house that was not filled with the Spirit. It didn't matter if they were in the front, in the back, on the left, or the right. The Holy Ghost filled all the house. Every row was saturated with God's power. Every aisle was flowing with the oil of gladness. I want to tell you tonight, friend, that God can move in all the house. Amen. He can move this whole house. He can fill it up in the back. He can fill it up in the front. He can pour His Spirit out over here. He can pour it to my life. He can fall upon the choir and fall upon the other musicians. He can fall upon the sound man in the back corner. I said he filled all the house. Can I tell you something tonight? You don't have to move from where you are to get help from God. But the Holy Ghost can fall on you right where you're at. He can fall on you in your pew. He can fall on you in the aisle. He can fall on you in the altar. He filled all the house. Oh! Holy Ghost, would you fall in this house? Oh, Holy Ghost, would you fill the house with your power and your spirit? Notice verse number three or four. And they were all filled. We have all of harmony. All of the house. But now he said, and they were all filled. This is all of the hearts. Amen. There was 120 and 120 were filled. I don't know how many we have here tonight. I have no idea. Amen. Pastor, you probably know a little better than I do how many this would be. But I want to tell you something. The Holy Ghost can fill every heart. He can fall in this place and fill the house and then move right in and fill every heart. You may have never had the baptism, but you can have it tonight. You may have had it for 40 years and need a refilling. You can get it tonight. All were participating. There were none cold. There were none half backslidden. There were none that just watched. But they got in and received from the Lord. Oh, can I tell you, church, it's time for us all to let the Holy Ghost fall upon us. Amen. He can fall on the young. He can fall on the middle age. He can fall on the old. He can fall on every one of us. Oh, Lord, fill the house, but then fill the heart. Fill us with your spirit. Amen. Now let's look at verse number 39. He said, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. All in harmony. All the house. All the hearts. But all here today. He said, it's for you. Now remember, he was talking to them back then at the day of Pentecost. He said, this is for all of you. Everybody in this building today on the day of Pentecost, he said, it's for you. Nobody has to go home without it. He said, but I want to tell you something else. It's for your children. Your children may not be here today, but they can have the same thing. He said, as a matter of fact, it's for all them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's what he said on the day of Pentecost. Oh, I want to preach to you tonight on He will fall upon us all. You see, He can do the same thing right here tonight, Brother Johnston, that He did all the way back on the first day of Pentecost. He can send the same wind. He can send the same fire. 
He can send the same Holy Ghost. He can baptize. It doesn't matter if we have 120 or 12 or 10 or 1. He can fall on us all. Oh, Holy Ghost, my prayer is, would you open the windows of heaven and fall upon us? Fall on the men. Fall on the women. Fall on the boys. Fall on the girls. Fall on us all. Amen. In this place, right here today, give us another Pentecost in the house. I don't know if you've heard of B.H. Clendenin. B.H. Clendenin is a pastor in Texas. And he has what is called the School of Christ International. And he takes it all around the world, teaching people about Christ. He took it into China. They went into the high mountains of China, where no white man had ever been before. When they got there, into the high mountains of China they found there was already a church existing there. What had happened was that they had somehow come across a portion of the New Testament. Just a portion. And they read that and had a salvation experience in their lives. It began to spread until finally they started a church and had over 500 people in that church saved and full of the Holy Ghost and never had a white man come and tell them about it. B.H. Clinton and got up into the mountains. He found that church there that was already saved and full of the Holy Ghost. They began to tell him how the Holy Ghost came. They did not know anything about the Holy Ghost. They didn't know anything about speaking in tongues. But he said that one night, the pastor of the church was telling him, and said one night we were having a prayer meeting, and we were all praying down in the altars, in the pews, in the floor, praying and calling on God. He said all of a sudden it sounded like a windstorm came in on the far end of town. Amen. And began to move through the town. He said we kept right on praying even though we were a little scared. We just kept on praying. Hallelujah. He said that windstorm moved right down the street until it came right to our church. It turned and came right in the door and moved right into our sanctuary. And he said when that wind began to blow in our sanctuary, he said all 500 of us us, uh, began to speak in a language uh, that we didn't understand. Uh, we didn't know what it was. Uh, we had never heard of the Holy Ghost. Uh, he said, but all of us, uh, amen, spoke in another language, uh, amen, that we didn't know what it was. He said they went home that night and they began to search that little portion of the New Testament they had. And they came across Acts chapter 2. And they read the first four verses. And it said, suddenly there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. He said, that was it. That's exactly what happened. That's how it was here in China. Amen. Over 500 people were filled with the Holy Ghost. And didn't even know what it was. I want to tell you something tonight. He can do it for us, Brother Whistler. He can do it for us, brother. He can fill you. He can fill your wife. He can fill your children. He can fall in this place tonight. Hey, we don't have to understand it all. He can fall upon us all. Amen. Oh, my prayer is Holy Ghost fall tonight. Holy Ghost start us off in a revival tonight with an outpouring of your spirit and your power. I'm going to close here in just a minute. There was a old black man came to the church over in England where General Booth had started the Salvation Army. And that black man has closed down. That church closed down. They don't use it anymore. Just as a museum. And there was an usher standing at the back door. And this old black man came to the door and said, Sir, would it be all right for a colored man to say his prayers in this church? That usher said, Sure, brother. Go right on in. Took him in and showed him the sanctuary. That old black man walked down to the altar. He opened his Bible up to Acts chapter 2. He put one hand on the Bible. And he stretched the other hand as high up in the air as he could. And he reared his head back and said, Oh, Lord! 
Would you do it again? Oh, Lord, would you do it again? Amen. Oh, God, give us another Acts 2. Do it again. I want to preach to you tonight in closing and tell you He can do it again. He can fall on us tonight like He did in the high mountains of China. He can fall on us tonight like He did in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 2. Oh, Lord, do it again. Oh, Lord, fall in this house. Oh, Lord, fall on Him and Him and her. Fill us up, O oh Lord. Baptize us again. Anoint us again. Revive us again. Fall on us all. Oh, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me tonight? All across the building. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands? Can we lift our hands and ask Him to do it again? Oh, let's ask Him to do it again. Fall on us again, O oh Lord. Fall on us again. Do it again, Lord. Right here in Wyandotte Tabernacle. Do it again. Do it again. Oh, if you want a baptism or if you want a refilling tonight, if you want a revival fire in your soul, I want you to come to this altar right now and ask Him to do it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Amen. Oh, let's start off revival tonight in a powerful way with the Lord falling on us all. Fall on us, God. Fall on us, Lord. Fall on us, oh God. Let Him refill us. Let Him refill us. Hallelujah. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, fill us again, Lord, fill us again, Lord. Oh, God, move in these altars tonight. Lord, move in these altars tonight. Move in this house tonight, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Fill us up, O oh God. Fill us up, O oh God. Fall upon us, Holy Ghost. Fall upon us, Holy Ghost. Do it here today, Lord. Fall on us here tonight, O oh God. Oh, do you need revival? Do you need a revival? Let Him fall on you. Do you need a refilling? Let Him fall on you. Fall on us, Lord. Oh, let's seek Him for a falling of His Spirit. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Satalama shanaba hatalalalalalama satala. Yes, fall on us, Lord. Fall on us, Lord. Fall on us, O Lord. Fall on us, O God. Spirit. Let Him revive you tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, let the Holy Ghost fall upon us, Lord. With the Holy Ghost and fire. He will fill your heart today to overflowing. As the Lord commanded you, bring your vessels not of you. He will fill your heart today to overflowing. With the Holy Ghost and power, He will fill your heart today to overflowing. As the Lord commanded you, bring your vessels, not a few. Oh, He will heal your heart today to overflowing. With the Holy Ghost and power, our 
Are you looking for the fullness of the blessing of the Lord in your heart and life today? Claim the promise of your Father. Come according to His Word in the blessed old time way. He will fill your heart today to overflowing as the Lord commanded you. Bring your vessels, not a few. He will fill your heart today to overflowing with the Holy Ghost and power. Bring your earthly are the vessels clean of Jesus' precious blood? Come, you needy one and all. And in human consecration, for the promise from the God till the Holy Ghost shall fall. He will fill your heart today to overflowing. And the Lord commanded you, bring your vessels, not a few. He will fill your heart. Today to overflowing with the Holy Ghost and power. The fullness of the blessed of the Lord in your heart and life today. Claim the promise of the Father. Come according to His word in the blessed old time way. He will fill your heart today to overflowing as the Lord commanded you. Bring your vessels, not a few. He will fill your heart today to overflowing with the Holy Ghost and power. Well, He will fill your heart today with overflowing as the Lord commanded you. Bring your vessels, not a few. He will fill your heart today to overflowing with the Holy Ghost and power. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. They were in an upper chamber. They were all in one accord. When the Holy Ghost descended, as was promised by our Lord. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. And baptize everyone. Yes, this power from heaven descended with the sound of a rushing wind. Tongues of fire came down upon them as the Lord said he would sin. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord. Send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. And baptize everyone. Yes, this old time power was given to our fathers who were true. This is promised to believers. And we all may have it too. 
power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now and baptize everyone. just now, oh Lord, send the power just now, oh Lord, send the power just now, and baptize everyone, Lord, send the power just now, oh Lord, send the power just now, oh Lord, send the power just now, and baptize Everyone, oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just. the power just now and baptize everyone. Yes, it's all time power was given to our fathers who were true. This is promised to 